The Lambert family returns in the all-new Insidious film, The Red Door. So let's see if this new horror film is worth your time. Hey everybody, my name's Justin here. I try to watch everything that hits theaters and on streaming services. If you guys are like me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and click that bell notification for more up and coming content. Josh Lambert heads east to drop his son Dalton off at school. However, Dalton's college dream soon becomes a living nightmare when the repressed demons of his past suddenly return to haunt them both. So the cast of Insidious 1 and 2 return for the fifth installment and Patrick Wilson, who stars as Josh Lambert, is directing this film and the film it could be better. I was all I could say that it, it could be a better film. The simplicity of the first two Insidious movies worked. It was very effective with a lot of its really simple jump scares. And then three and four seem like just generic horror films. And we could tell that Patrick Wilson is trying to recapture what worked so well in the first two Insidious films, the atmosphere to that movie with this film. But also at times he is not venturing out of the generic atmosphere within this movie. So at times it's really hard to understand Patrick Wilson's style of directing because you feel at times he is borrowing what James Wan did so well in the first two movies while also trying to do his own thing but it does feel quite generic. The story itself could be a little deeper. Uh, at times it's very spotty with what it's trying to introduce. We have Dalton who's at college now and he is starting to uh, remember things from his past and if you remember at the end of the second film they uh, made Josh and Dalton forget everything that happened with the coma and all the demons as well so both Josh and Dalton are starting to piece things together and remember things of their past but that feels like it's just surface level they start to when Dalton starts to enter the further there's other storylines that are happening that are supposed to kind of help him piece things together, but you get the sense that it doesn't. And it's just uh, pointless things within the further that really have nothing to do with Dalton or even his father, Josh, and the story, their development. And so many times the film has these little spotty moments of trying to connect Josh and Dalton and uh, piecing together their past and have an understanding of it. It's like it's derailing those moments quite often within this movie. And then when you get to the big moments at the end with Josh and Dalton trying to protect themselves and get out of the further and close the door and all of that, it's not very strong because the film barely uh, developed uh, the further between Josh and Dalton, uh, little hints of different storylines going on throughout the film. And so when we get to the end, it's not impactful. You don't feel that emotion the same way you did with the first two films because it was really just focused on them and their story. And when him with, and with Dalton in college, you have other demons or other things in the further that Dalton comes across. It's just derailing the uh, the buildup at the end or the development between father and son. And whatever is haunting Dalton in college as well, I don't feel any sense of urgency or suspense or uh, any thrilling moments. The jump scares feel very generic, like we've kind of seen this before, but the overall presence of the demons, uh, the demon with the red face within this movie feels very absent. Like we're just focused on Dalton trying to piece things together. He's painting things that he's starting to remember. He's calling his family and saying, hey, what's with this red door and all of the things within this further? But when you have uh, these demons that kind of pop up here and there, you don't feel 
any intensity to them. You don't feel like they are that threat to Dalton and Josh. It's just mostly focused on, hey, yeah, I remember being in the further at one point in my life, and let's discover that a little more. Let's uh, venture into that. And so by doing that, so much of that, you don't have any strong presence of these demons or any uh, terrifying moments within this film. And so, like I said, Patrick Wilson directing it, you, at times you feel like he's trying to borrow some simplicity to the film from James Wan, but also trying to do his own thing and just feels very generic. The movie could have been more emotional, have a stronger connection between father and son. I like how Patrick Wilson did handle both Dalton and uh, Josh with, in this film. Immediately you can tell that these two characters are disconnected, not only from each other, but from themselves. That's not due to the acting of Ty Simpkins and uh, Patrick Wilson. It's due to these characters are having these repressed memories and they're slowly starting to remember things. They just feel very disconnected. And I like how he was able to handle how the past, even though they remember it, has affected them and their personality and they've been uh, disconnected from each other for years. It's really affected the relationship, especially with Rose Byrne and, uh, within this film. But I like how the characters were handled, especially in the beginning. You just felt something was off and they were going to explore a lot of that. So, you know, at times Insidious, Red Door had the right elements. The story was there, but it could have been expanded and deeper. It's very spotty with what it's trying to introduce things that Dalton encounters and he feels like it's his mission to uh, solve these things within the the further and the the trailer also promised like this secret to the Lambert family and that itself too was very weak like the conclusion to it all uh, could have been much stronger could have been more impactful to the family I could see what they were doing with it but it just did not work overall this movie it was quite disappointing. I was looking forward to Patrick Wilson's direction and his connection to the Insidious franchise. And you do feel that love that he has being in this franchise in his directorial debut. It's not a horrible directorial debut, but it's one that could be a little more polished, understanding his style. It could have been vastly different from the previous Insidious films, but overall just kind of feels like it's borrowed uh but overall, it has a lot of borrowed elements to it, and that makes it not feel very original. So Insidious, The Red Door, conclusion to, I guess, the Lambert story. Uh, they wrapped it up. Maybe there'll be more down the road uh, with other stories. I mean, 3 and 4 were different from 1 and 2 and 5 now, so... Um, I'm still down for more stories. I do miss Lynn Shay as Elise. I know that she died in the previous installments, but... Uh, they've managed to bring her back in uh, other ways. Um, I think she was uh, a very strong character throughout the Insidious franchise. But overall, this film, disappointing. Could have been better. Not the best one in the franchise, but not the worst one either. So before I give you my score for Insidious The Red Door, make sure to check out my channel here. I do movie reviews, trailer actions, ranking videos, tier lists, all that fun movie-related content that you see on YouTube. I do it all here, so hit that subscribe button to get it all in one spot. And if you'd like to see where Insidious The Red Door ranks amongst all the other 2023 releases I've seen this year, follow me on Letterboxd and there you can find my ranking. I'm going to go ahead and give Insidious The Red Door a C+. Thank you guys for checking out my review for Insidious The Red Door, the fifth installment in this horror franchise. Have you guys seen it by chance? What do you think about it? Let me know in the comment section down below and stay tuned for more up and coming content like this. My name is Just Watchers Movies and you guys stay classy YouTube.